What's good, y'all? It's that boy, Easy Millions, and I'm your host of that boy, E-T-V. You already know, man, we are back on the finals, and today is the day of the new update, so you know I'm hopping on here because, especially, we're going to talk about this new mode, Terminal Attack, man. And listed here, they say Terminal Attack is a new 5v5 single life attack and defend game mode in which contestants take turns delivering the decryption key to the terminal and the best of seven rounds wins. Attackers are tasked by completing the upload while the defenders must prevent it by any means necessary, man. No healing, no revive, one life. Players can regenerate help up to 100 HP and gadgets do not regenerate at all. So engage with caution and go in with a plan. You can play Terminal Attack in the Horizon, Monaco, and Las Vegas arenas, man. And be warned, the destruction you will cause will carry over through all seven rounds, man. So this new mode right here seems like it's going to be dope. The finals has been a breath of fresh air in the FPS genre so i'm hopefully this mode hits hard and we see a whole bunch of people come back man but let's go ahead and get into some meat and potatoes and we're gonna start with these balance changes man and starting with gadgets we got the barricade and they increased the size of the barricade by 20 percent which i think was actually pretty needed like i felt like the barricade wasn't big enough to truly defend you so they have increased the size of it which i think will make it a lot more viable then we have the glitch grenade and for the glitch grenade, they update the glitch effect so that it will now pass through mesh shields and dome shields. So that is a huge, huge inadvertent nerf to the heavies with their shields. But hey, it is a glitch grenade, so it should actually act that way. Now, we got the stun gun, where they increase the stun gun projectiles maximum travel distance from 12 meters to 16 meters. Players who are stunned can now use their specializations and gadgets while stunned. Players who are stunned can now aim down sights while stunned. And players who are stunned can now crouch. And they have a developer note where they say, We felt that the stun gun was a little too dominant as a gadget and led to too many slow, inevitable deaths. The stun effect now mostly lowers the target's movement speed, blocks them from jumping, mantling, or vaulting over obstacles, and interrupts interactions. This makes stunned players vulnerable, but gives them a fighting chance. And I 100% agree with these stun gun changes, man. I'm tired, 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 tired. Of the times I do get to hop on the finals and try to play something, I'm damn playing. Half the time I'm playing, I'm stunned. So <laughs> thank God they're actually changing this. Now, we got the Vanishing Bomb. They decrease the impact of the cloaking effect of the Vanishing Bomb so effective players are slightly easier to see when moving, man. So this is also an inadvertent nerf to, I believe, the Light Class as the Vanishing Bomb was vanishing bomb was one of the ways for them to go invisible and I also believe allows your teammates to go invisible as well. But allowing you to see them easier while they're moving is much needed and a great change. Now we're on to the balance. We're on to the balance changes for these maps for monaco on power shift they tweak the traversal options between villas and park for easier access to the rooftops they made minor adjustments to the spawn points around the forest and royal plaza areas to provide a clearer front line during the final stretch and they slightly adjusted the path of the platform to fix some clipping issues and make it more accessible on the road between shopping district and forest man so with these maps, just like the last previous change, it looks like they're just changing the terrain to make the map a lot easier to traverse. Now we get into some specializations as we talk about the cloaking device, which is decrease the impact of the cloaking effect so that the cloaked players are slightly easier to see when they are moving. So again, we see another change to an invisibility uh, device where basically now it'll just be a lot easier to see these people as they're running around, man. So that's always a great thing. Great, great for the game, I believe. Here we go. Now we're into these weapons, and we're going to talk about the F car. They decreased the damage from 25 to 22. They increased the mag size from 20 to 25. And they increased the fall off damage multiplier at max range from 50% to 55%, meaning the weapon does slightly more damage at range. And here's a dev note. 
Our data shows us that the F car is very strong in the hands of good players, but harder to use for newer players. These changes hopefully rein in the weapon's power at higher skill levels while making it slightly more forgiving to use for newer players, man. So the F car, I know, is one of the more popular guns for people to run around in, round with. So with the decrease to the damage, it's kind of offset with the increase of max size. But I don't use the F car personally. I still use the AK. But, you know, let me know how y'all feel about this F car change. I'll probably play a game or two with the F car just, just to see how it is. But I personally don't. Uh, like it over the other one now we're gonna get into content and bug fixes and in the gadgets for this they have the flashbang which they fixed an issue where weak flashes could overwrite strong flashes not really sure what that means uh, they fixed an issue where grenade mines and c4s with default customizations sometimes got a random customize applied they fixed an issue where spectators could trigger mines they fixed several issues where it looked like the player could place an object but no object appeared and they fixed an issue where the preview arc showed in the air detonation effect on grenades that don't actually detonate on a timer man so a lot of little changes here to the grenades and things of that nature i'm still confused about the flashbang one there but maybe that's something i'll actually notice when, when i'm in game uh now we got uh for the power shift game mode they added Sewell to the map pool so power shift has gotten themselves a new map in the pool now for all the maps in general, for the general maps, they adjusted collision on some bushes to improve interactions with placeable jump pads. And they fixed an issue where zipline cables did not break correctly when intersecting certain objects. And on Horizon, they reduced the intensity of some of the interior colors with a dev note stating that mon monitor and graphic settings that boost saturation make the colors more intense. Adjusting these settings can help to further reduce the intensity, man. Now, here's something that a lot of players are going to be interested in, and here we go. We're going to talk about ranked tournaments, man. So first thing they got, they reduced the ranked tournament size from 48 to 24 players. The dev note states, this change should make the matchmaking faster, make tournaments available to more players in different regions, and help improve the quality of skill-based matchmaking leading to closer games. That is definitely what we need for the SBMM and I do like the fact that they toned it down a little bit, hopefully make it a lot better. They also reduced ranked tournament duration from four rounds to three to account for the change in the number of players. They increased the speed at which visible league rankings synchronize with SBMM ratings. They improved matchmaking to closer matchmake players within their league rank. So hopefully no more. I saw a post on Facebook where they had like a bronze in there with a whole bunch of diamonds or something. That was kind of crazy. Now, and then last, they added an indicator in the league overview screen to show your change in rank progression from the last tournament you participated in. And the note, dev note states, this is the same arrow indicator that you get after a ranked tournament has been completed so that if you missed it, you can review it on the league overview page man so a lot of little changes here for rank the biggest one is the numbered lower of players and numbered lower of total rounds but this i believe this will actually be healthier for rank but all rank grinders especially you high roller ttv i see you boy let me know how you feel about these changes to these rank tournaments man last but not least we're gonna get into some specializations and right here they fixed an issue where turrets lost targeting on a players with riot shield which is just wild to me and they fix an issue where terrorists will fall through buildings and not rotate when landing. I've actually seen this myself, and it annoyed me one game because it was it was it just wouldn't turn, and the guy was on the other side. And if it had turned around, it would have been a lot better, man. But that's all the biggest things that I feel as though I should have went in and talked about. But there are there are a whole lot of other little nuanced things like UI changes and things of that nature that are in the patch notes. So down in the description and down in this post. I will have a link to the full patch notes so that you guys can go ahead and check that out. And I definitely uh, recommend that, man. But until then, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, follow, share, become a supporter, and catch me streaming on Facebook Gaming and Twitch at that boy ETV. <laughs> now, it's been another patch notes, baby. I'm about to hop on here and see about this new game mode. I'm out. Catch you on the next one. Peace.